Hi, my name is Tyler Lemke, and we're here at Jones Technical Institute today, and I will be explaining a torque converter. Um, here, we have a torque converter from an automatic transmission, um, 4L60E to be specific. Um, and the torque converter is a complete sealed unit. This one has actually been um, unsealed to uh, allow for demonstration and you know observation, learn how it works. So um, when you get a torque converter, it's gonna be one sealed unit. This side bolts to the flex plate towards the engine, and then this side goes towards the transmission with all the little bumps on it. So if you had your transmission hanging here downwards, and this was the bell housing wide open and the tail shaft was at the bottom, you would actually fill it up and install it downwards like this, and then this would bolt to your flex plate on your engine. Um, go ahead and open this guy up and explain the names of some of these parts. Um, this is also this is part of the case so this actually is connected to the outer shell so the whole outer shell is just one big piece and uh, this is called the impeller or the um, pump this is what actually starts moving the fluid um, since the case is connected to the flex plate as the motor turns this is turning constantly if your motor is on this is turning and moving fluid no matter no matter what there's no way to stop this from turning or disconnect this from your motor so this is constantly spinning and it's got fluid in it if you notice it's got all of these blades now if you fill this thing up with fluid and started spinning it there's a force exerted due to this spinning called centrifugal force and what it does is it moves things from the center outwards as it spins the more it spins the more force is going to push outwards towards the sides now, this thing is curved as you can see so what happens is as the fluid is pushed outwards it actually ramps up and out away from this so this thing's filled with fluid and spinning fluid is going to go down and up and outwards away from this so and then, um, as it is thrown outwards and away it is actually caught by this guy here and this guy is called the turbine and these two halves work together as a whole to convert torque. As this guy spins, as the motor spins, this guy's sitting in here, stationary. You have your foot on your brakes. This is connected directly to your input shaft of your transmission. So once this starts to turn, then the transmission gears start to turn. Once the transmission gears start to turn, depending on which gear you've selected, your wheels will start to turn. So if you're in drive, and your foot is on the brake, this is stick stationary because your foot is actually holding this still. But your motor is turning, so this is spinning, and your wheels aren't. Well, as you take your foot off the brake, you've released all the pressure that is holding this still, and this, you can start to speed up by hitting the accelerator. As you hit the accelerator, this starts to spin faster and throw fluid out towards this. What this does, is as the fluid comes towards this it goes into these jackets and it goes through this curve and it actually ramped back out towards the impeller so what you get is kind of a back and forth motion the motion the fluid goes down and up and out and then it is caught by this side pretty much playing catch throws out from the top catches in the top goes back in through the out through the inside and then throws it back in Caught by this side, comes up, throws it back out. Caught by the top, throws it back in through the inside. So it's just a kind of a rotational moment. The, the fluid is being thrown back and forth. Um, but there's really no torque converted there. We need another piece there to, uh, instead of just having it thrown back and forth, but the rotational moment movement to um, be transferred as well the rotational energy instead of just the back and forth throwing of the fluid and That's what this guy is there for. This is called a stator um, It has angled fins as well And what this does is when the fluid is thrown directly back it angles it turns it at about 90 degrees So when the fluid comes straight at this stator It goes out the outside and then it comes back on the inside and on its way back It hits this stator and it's thrown at an angle and when it's thrown at an angle it hits these fins at an angle and causes these to turn and then it's thrown back out at an angle and causes these to turn so now this back and forth moment has also been turned 
in the back and forth moment with rotation, which actually converts the torque from this one, from your engine, to your turbine, which turns your input shaft of your automatic transmission. So the fluid being thrown back and forth is hit by the stator, the stator turns it 90 degrees, and that is actually how the torque converts um, from your engine to your transmission. Without this stator, there's actually no way to convert the torque. So without this, you're not gonna get any movement forward. Um, there's about three phases when you're talking about an automatic transmission. You've got your stall phase where you're just sitting at the light, you just stop, you've got your foot on the brake, um, where the impeller is rotating, but the turbine is stationary. So you've got your case, which is really all this together, spinning. You know, the turbine is inside, stationary. So you've got this all spinning and your turbine is stationary. You've got your foot on the brake. This is holding still. There's no torque being converted. There's fluid being thrown, but it's not enough energy to overcome the resistance of your foot being on the brakes. This is not going to turn. Um, second stage is acceleration. You take your foot off the brakes, you free this from any forces besides the friction of the gears and the tires on the ground from being able to turn. Then you hit your gas pedal. You're going to start to turn the case, the pump, the impeller, fins, these guys right here faster. As you throw faster, that fluid is going to start to get thrown over to here. And it's going to get thrown back and that stator is going to catch it and angle it so that way this guy starts to turn. This is always going to spin a little bit faster than your turbine. So your impeller is going to be spinning. At the acceleration speed, you're going to start spinning it real fast and then this guy is going to eventually start to catch some of that. But since this is spinning faster and this is spinning slower, there's actually more torque here than in the engine. So you've actually got a torque increase, um, torque multiplication as they like to call it, um, at your lower speeds. So you're spinning that guy, and you got your torque transferring over to this guy and your wheels are turning. That's your phase two acceleration phase. The turbine has more torque and less speed than the impeller. And then you've got a coupling phase, which is your third phase. And that's where the turbine starts spinning real fast with the impeller so they actually almost start spinning at the same speed um this guy isn't really ever going to get up to the exact speed there's about a 10 percent loss there of power so you really only need to get this guy up to about 90 percent of the speed of the impeller but once that happens everything kind of starts to spin at the same speed and um there's a a loss of power there because the fluid has drag so to eliminate that loss of power there and to just keep having them going the same speed, we've got another piece of this called the clutch, the lock-in clutch. What this guy does is splines to the turbine, so it's stuck to the turbine no matter what. The turbine spins, the clutch spins. So once they get going about the same speed, instead of having the fluid do all the work, what we do is activate this clutch. And this clutch has friction material here and here, and what happens is the fluid pressurizes the solenoid that pushes this clutch out to attach to the case. So clutch is attached to the turbine, the inside part, and the, the clutch is also attached to the case now because we've activated the clutch. So since the turbine is attached to the clutch and the case is attached to the clutch, the case and the turbine have now become one unit. There is no power loss. It is a direct drive from the engine to the input shaft of the transmission. And that's only happening at higher speeds. As soon as you start accelerating, the clutch is going to let go. As soon as you hit your brakes, the clutch is going to let go. So that clutch is really there just for like, you know, cruising speeds. Once you get up to speed, everything's spinning the same speed. Instead of having all that heat and all that power loss to the fluid, you actually just lock the two together and you uh, eliminate power loss. Um, that's just the basics of a torque converter. A lot going on here. Um, but yeah, the fluid just gets thrown back and forth. That stator angles the fluid, so once it gets thrown back, it gets thrown back at an angle, actually causes the fins to catch it and turn forward. So the outside part is the impeller. This part here, impeller and the case are together as one unit sealed. And then on the inside of the case, we've got the turbine, which is spun by the impeller. Impeller spins, which spins the turbine. Do to this guy in the middle of the state. Now once they get spinning the same speed, the clutch, this guy here, locks to the case and is already spined to the turbine, so the case and the turbine have become one piece for direct drive from the motor to the transmission. Thanks for stopping by.